Christian Hope Ministry. Welcome to Hour of Hope. Through the joy of Christ's message, we aim to be a force for positive change in the lives of God's children. Our aim is to make mainstream Christian worship accessible, joyful, and welcoming to newcomers both inside and outside church. Get ready to be impacted with your host, Rev. Dr. Richard Achempong Godwin. I thank God for your life today, and I pray that the Word of God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to assure you in God's Word. Now, many a time, so many of us, our circumstances put us down. But today, I want to use God's Word to bless your life and to encourage you and strengthen you. I want to read my Bible from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 43. And I want to read from verse 1. He says, but now thou says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Hallelujah. Child of God, God wants to assure you in his word. And in his word, he says, fear not. Now, why is he saying fear not? Because uh, God knows everything, and he knows that most of us, we are afraid. We are afraid of circumstances. We are afraid of what will happen tomorrow. We are afraid of perhaps losing our job. Uh, we are afraid perhaps to die prematurely. We are afraid of so many issues. But God wants to assure you, and he's saying that, fear not. Hallelujah. And then he said, you are his. So he said, oh, Jacob. Now, if I were you, I would put my name there. When he said, oh, Jacob, he's speaking to you. Oh, Israel, he's speaking to you. Put your name there. And then he said, I have called you by name. You are mine. I want you to know that God has called you and I, and we belong to him. Praise God. And the Bible says that he has redeemed us. The word redeem means he has purchased you and I. Now, every one of us, when you purchase something, the reason why you purchase that thing is because you like it. Hallelujah. And if you purchase something, that thing is really important. That is why you purchase it. You don't go to the shop to buy something that you don't need. You buy what you need. So here, God is saying he has purchased you. So that means... He, you, you are something really precious. You are something important to God. And you want to make use of, of you are valuable, and he want to use you for something great. That is why he has purchased you. And every now and then, when, when you buy something, let's say you, you love and you are an animal lover, and you buy uh, maybe a cat, you buy a dog or something like that, you take care of what you have bought. Hallelujah. You feed the cat uh, or you feed the dog. Uh, you care for them. You make sure uh, every now and then uh, you bath them and you take care of them. So in the same vein, as God has purchased you and I, as God has redeemed you and I and we belong to him, he will take care of you and I. He will provide for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he's reassuring you today in his word. And he's saying that, Fear not. Now, the, the, the opposite of fear is faith. Now, as you know, there are two uh, 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 spirits, two important great spirits in this world. We have the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. The, uh, the devil operates by fear and God operates by faith. So any one of us, when we, we, we enter into fear, we open ourselves up for the enemy to use that to attack us. That is why in scripture, when Job was in fear, the, the, the enemy used that to attack Job's life. So irrespective of what may be going on in your life, I want you to move into faith and do not fear. Do not fear. Move into faith, do not fear. Hallelujah. Because 
fear move the enemy into action and faith move God into action. Praise God. So God is telling you and I that fear not. Fear not for he is with you. And if God be for you, the Bible says who can be against you. I, I believe if God is with us, nothing. Although there may be issues of life, but God will deliver us, God will protect us, and God will save our life. Whatever stands against us, God will see us through. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he went on to say that he have called you by your name. You are his. Hallelujah. You are not belongs to God. That is why I said fear not because you belong to him. He will take care of you. He will protect you. Hallelujah. And then he said, when you pass through, when you pass through the waters, he will be with you. When you and I pass through the waters, God says he will be with us. Why waters? Now, waters are symbolic of life. Water is symbolic of life. So here, God is saying that when you and I pass through the issues of life, he, he, he is there with us. So we should fear not. Now, of course, we know that life has got its issues. But God is reassuring us that he is with us. Jesus, our Lord, said, in this world, in this world, we will face challenges. In this world, we will go through tribulations. But then he said, we should rejoice because he has overcome the world for us. And I want to assure you today that because God, through Christ, has overcome the issues and the challenges of life, don't be afraid. Trust in his mercy and trust in his grace and trust in his care because he will protect you, he will deliver you, and he will provide for you. And more, more also, he's assuring you that when we go through the challenges of life, he is with us. And then he went on to say that when you pass through rivers, he is with you. So that means he will not leave us nor forsake us. Now the rivers here is talking about the turbulences of life. In fact, life has got a turbulence. It's like any one of us who, if you have travel and you are in the plane, sometimes uh, uh, you come ag uh, against turbulences. And in the plane, when you come against turbulences, uh, there's nowhere to go, but you have to face it. And likewise, when, when, when you are in the plane, then you see it, that the pilot will announce, uh, put your seatbelt on. Tighten your seatbelt. So in life, it's like that. And uh, as you are in the plane and you watch and you watch maybe five minutes, ten minutes, the turbulence will be over. So life is like that. Sometimes you and I will pass through, you know, uh, 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 the rivers, the turbulences of life. But even so, God is assuring us that he is with us. And if God be for us, all will be fine. Praise God. I don't know the turbulences that you are facing today. It could be marital. It could be joblessness. It could be financial. It could be immigration. It could be so many issues. But if you and I will trust God and you will focus on God, God will cause our turbulences to be over. Because he said in his word, when you pass through the water, praise God, when you pass through the water, I am with you. When you go through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. So the turbulences of life will, will not overflow you, will not, will not sweep you away. Just, just that you have to trust in God's mercy. Hallelujah. And if you do so, it will all be over and you will be fine and you will be well in the name of the Lord. And then he said, when you go through fire, when you go through fire, he said, I will not abandon you. Even when you go through fire, he says, he is with you, and they shall not bend you. Praise God. Nor shall the flames scorch you. So uh, 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 when you go through fire, now the fire here is also talking about the, the, the great challenges of life, the great problems of life, the great issues of life. Even then, God says that when you go through them, he is with you. 
And we know in scripture, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, whereby the three Hebrew uh, men were thrown into fire, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Praise God. Because God was true to his word, when they were placed in fire, the Bible says that as the king was looking, he saw a fourth man, which is Jesus Christ, was in the fire with them. So God's word is true. When we go through our fire, I don't know the fire that you may be going through, but whatever thing that you classify as fire, as even as you go through, God is with you. And if God be for you, all will be fine. Praise God. Sometimes it is the challenges that we go through that God uses the challenges that we go through to bless our lives. And it is my prayer that whatever issue you have, whatever challenges that you go through or you are going through now, may God use that to promote you. May God use that to bring whatever goodness that he has deposited in your life in the name of Jesus. In the book of Psalm 66, reading from verse 10 to 12, when you read there carefully, you will see that the, the, the psalmist was talking about how God have caused them to go through trials and tribulations, how God have caused them through uh, them going through fires. Praise God. But then I love verse 12 when you said, when he said, but now, but now you have brought us into our wealthy place. So I sincerely believe that sometimes when we go through our our challenges, when we go through our fire, when we go through our problems of life, God is using that to burn the shaft around us. And as when these shackles are burned and these shafts are burned, then he brings us into our wealthy place. May every challenge, may every problem that you are encountering, may God use that to bless you. May God use that to promote you. May God use that to bring you into your wealthy place in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you look at the, the story of the three Hebrew boys, when they came out of the fire, the king realized that, hey, these guys are different. So we know in scripture that the king upgraded and uplifted them. May you get your upgrade this year. May God promote you in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we continue to read the scripture, the Bible says that in verse 4, since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Praise God. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Now, most of the time, the devil speaks to a lot of people. And a lot of people, because of the challenges that they go through, they think God don't love them. Here, the scripture made it really plain that you and I, we are precious in, in God's eye. Now, precious, when the, the Bible, or when in the English language, the word precious means you, you, you are valuable, you, you are important. So I want you to know that you are very important to God. Uh, you, you, you are precious in the sight of God. And then the Bible says that God have honored you. Hallelujah. I want you to know that because you are precious, God have honored you. And then the Bible says that God have loved you. He loves you. And most of the time, the enemy will want you to know that God don't care. God don't, you, God, God don't love you. And sometimes he uses the challenges of life, you know, to speak to you. But I always say this, that the challenges of life prove that the word of God is true. Because remember when God said to Adam and Eve in the garden, the moment you eat the fruit of this tree, you will die. Praise God. Now, death here is talking about the separation from God and God goodness and God provision. So, if, if the life that we live in, if we don't face challenges, praise God, we will not know that the word of God is true because he said that to Adam and he said that to Eve. Praise Jesus. But God being good, whenever we go through our problems, he comes to our aid and he, he, he takes us out and he brings us, as the scripture said, 
into our worldly place. May God bring you into your worldly place. Whatever you are going through, may he bring you into your worldly place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Through the joy of Christ's message, we aim to be a force for positive change in the lives of God's children. Our aim is to make mainstream Christian worship accessible, joyful, and welcoming to newcomers both inside and outside church. Get ready to be impacted with your host, Rev. Dr. Richard Achempong Godwin. May he bring you into your worldly place in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Now, this is the portion of the scripture that I, I love most. Now, the Bible says that because you and I are precious in the sight of God, and because you and I, you know, God loves you and God have honored you and I, the Bible says that he will give men, hallelujah, for us, in other words, uh, God will exchange, praise God, our life. Whenever it comes to things uh, of, of life and death, God will cause that to go to the enemy in the name of Jesus. In verse 3, he says, I gave Egypt for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Here he's talking about sinners. He's talking about the nations that are run, that are sinners. Here he's talking about people who don't believe in God. And so likewise, in the same way, as you are a child of God, as you have been purchased by God, as you are precious, as you are honored by him and he loves you, he say, he's saying to you that every danger, every uh, difficulty, whatever the enemy may program against your life, I, God, I will intervene. I, God, I will exchange your life. Hallelujah. I look in scripture and I see the truth in this. Uh, you see in scripture in the book of Esther, the Bible talks about a man called Mordecai and a man also called Haman. And we know out of enviness, uh, you know, Haman plotted evil against Mordecai. But God being so good, uh, God being so good, although hey man was the prime minister, he can do everything, but then God caused the king to come to the aid of Mordecai. And uh, the evil that he plotted against Mordecai, uh, it, it came to an end because God exchanged it. Of course, as you read the Bible, you will find out that hey man wanted Mordecai to be hung on the gallows. But instead, he, Haman, the prime minister, was hung. Praise Jesus. And then we know in scripture that uh, out of God's goodness, Mordecai took over the position of Haman. So that is what the Bible is saying. God says, because I have loved you, I will give men in exchange of you. Uh, then again, we also see in the book of Daniel. Daniel was loved by God, hated by uh, people uh, because of uh, the promotion that was coming his way. And then we know that the people plotted, they went to see the king, and then a new law was put in place that nobody should serve the, uh, any God, including the living God. But Daniel, you know, it was hard for him to, you know, obey that because it has become his custom that every day he has to pray three times to the living God. Now, we know in scripture that the enemies were watching. A moment that they saw that Daniel was not praying to God, and they were reported Daniel was arrested, and then he was put in the lion's den. But then we know God came to his rescue, and Daniel, praise God, uh, the lions could not eat him, and Daniel was rescued. Today, I prophesy over your life, that in the name of Jesus Christ, because you serve the living God, no lion can devour you. Now, lion here is symbolic of the power of the devil. And I prophesy over your life that you will live and not die. 
With long life, he will satisfy you. No power of hell can overcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because you and I serve the living God. Praise Jesus. The living God loves you and I in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I have seen as a pastor, and I've overheard stories about how God, through his goodness, have exchanged evil that were meant for God's people. Praise Jesus. Uh, in church, I hear stories, true stories, of course, whereby people come and testify about God's goodness. Praise Jesus. And I pray for you today that God will be, hallelujah, there for you. Even when the enemy try anything against you, may God come sin. May God deliver you. May God save your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because this God is a living God. Now, of course, because of God's goodness, because of God's love, that the greatest exchange that God have done for you and I is bringing his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ have taken over every negative thing that could have happened to us, and he has exchanged himself for us. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you read from verse, uh, verse uh, 20, 21, you will find out that the Bible says that him who knew no sin, he took upon us our sin, and he has given us his righteousness. So I want you to know that the greatest exchange, Jesus has taken it. Praise God. He took our sin, and he has made us righteous before God. On the cross, we also know that he took our curse. Any curse that was upon our life, Jesus has taken it. So there, was, there is no reason for you to suffer. He has taken our death, and then he has given us life. So you and I have life. When we talk about life, we have life abundant. Praise God. Now may the abundant life of God be your portion. Today, as you are listening to me, may the exchange that Jesus has exchanged for you and I, may that be your portion. The Bible says that he took our poverty and he gave us his riches. May you have the riches of God in the name of Jesus Christ. May every curse upon your life be broken in the name of Jesus. May the joy of the Lord be your strength. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Today, I don't know what you are going through. Uh, maybe something is troubling you, but I pray for you that because Jesus has taken that away, may that be removed from your life, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are sick, Jesus took your sickness so that his good health will be your portion. May you receive the health, the good health. May you receive the good health of Christ Jesus. May healing be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you right now that those who are sick, whatever problem you have, may the healing grace of God touch you. Whatever problem you have, May the abundant life of God remove that away from your life in the name of Jesus. May the goodness of God be your portion in Jesus' name. May the peace of God be your portion. One of the greatest exchange that Jesus took our troubles and he gave us his peace. May the peace of God be your portion today. So in conclusion, I want you to know that Jesus loves you. I want you to know that whatever burden, in fact, the Bible says we should cast our burden upon him and he will sustain us. Whatever burden that you are carrying, cast it on him and be rest assured that he will sustain you because he's a good God. He loves you. Hallelujah. That is why even Jesus came and died for you and I. The Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So, be assured of the love of Christ. He loves you. He loves you. And if he loves you, he will care for you. He will protect you. He will deliver you from every evil. So he's saying to you and I today that when we walk through the waters, 
he is with us. When we go through the rivers, he is with us. When we pass through fire, he is with you. And if God be for you, hallelujah, the Bible says, who can be against you? If God be for you, understand that. That means he will redeem you. You are not going down, but you will go up. Irrespective of what happened, you won't go down, but you will go up. Hallelujah. So smile. Put a smile on your face and see the goodness of God. Child of God, uh, as I'm ending my message, I want to hear from you. I want to agree with God for you. Praise God. Do well to call. Call the number on the screen so that I will pray with you. Hallelujah. And whatever um, your problem may be, I'm here to let you know that our God is a prayer hearing and our God is a prayer answer God. The Bible said, call unto me and I will answer you. And the Bible said, when two agree on anything, God will hear and God will answer. I want to agree with you in prayer. So call the number on the screen and I will pray with you, knowing that our God answer prayer and he will answer you and I. God bless you until you hear from me again. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Amen. Christian Hope Ministry. Welcome to Hour of Hope. Through the joy of Christ's message, we aim to be a force for positive change in the lives of God's children. Our aim is to make mainstream Christian worship accessible, joyful, and welcoming to newcomers both inside and outside church. Ready to be impacted with your host, Reverend Dr. Richard Achempong Godwin.